Hello, how are you all doing today? Welcome to Excel OET Academy, your number one OET Academy in Nigeria and in West Africa. Well, I'm Dr. Ibuka, one of the tutors and co-founders of Excel OET Academy. So I'd like to tell you all what OET exam, which is the Occupational English Test, is all about. What you should expect, what you should anticipate, you know, your worries, you know, and probably the advantages and disadvantages of taking OET exams in the country. Shall we go? Pew! Hello, you're welcome to Excel OET Academy, your number one academy for your OET exams in Nigeria, West Africa, even Africa and beyond. I mean, um, so I would like to just give you an overview of what OET exam is all about. So first of all, the meaning of OET exam just means occupational English test. So just an English test, right? And then this kind of test is tailored to certain professions. Of course, for healthcare professionals, like the doctors, the nurses, the pharmacies, the physiotherapists, veterinary medicine. I mean, the list are endless. So far, you are allied or a healthcare professional. Now, this exam entails you, you know, writing some part of the subtest and then expecting you to get certain grades, okay, for this exam. Now, it is one of those popular English proficiency exams. As we all know, we have different English proficiency exams, but this particular one is one of those ones that are for healthcare professionals. And of course, what is it used for? I mean, so I'm pretty used to just majorly to get job employment in English speaking countries like the Canada, like US, you know, like, you know, British, like England, you know, Scotland, mention them, and the list are endless. So that is just the purpose, usually for work purposes. Of course, some people have asked whether it is for some academic purpose. Yes, some universities can use it for academic purpose, but then the major aim is for people to gain employment in those English speaking countries. Mm. Right, so for the occupational English test, you know, of course, they have components of these exams. And these components of the exam, you have four components. And what are the four components? You have your listening, you have your reading, you have your writing, you have your speaking. So on the text day, you first commence with your listening exams. The next will be followed by your reading, and then you have your writing, and then the last will be your speaking. Please note that the speaking test occurs on the same day for all the other part of the subtest, unlike some other English proficiency exam where sometimes you might need to write the speaking or do the speaking rather before the test day or after or even during the test before OET or question English test, all the speaking is done on the same day. And for the listening, what is expected of you? For the listening, you just to test how well you can comprehend, okay, the audio that is going to be played. And of course, the audio is always tailored towards health related topics. The same thing too goes for your reading. You know, how can you comprehend this reading text for your health related topics? Your speaking too, you have to speak in um, subtest on that day. And of course, what you're going to be communicating will be all related to the healthcare field. And of course, the writing just consists of letter writing. I mean, just letter writing. And you're just going to have just one, not two, just one. Of course, the letter writing can be a transfer letter, can be a discharge letter, can be an update letter, can be a referral letter, and you know, can be any form of letter, but then you're just going to have just a letter on that testing. Who are the target audience? Well, as I said, usually healthcare professionals usually covering like 12 different fields. Um, so medicine, nursing, dentistry, physiotherapy, pharmacies, veterinary medicine, podiatricians. I mean, the lists are endless, but then of course you can just, you know, check their site and see the number of, you know, allied healthcare professionals that can take, you know, the occupational English test exam. All right, so what are the formats? I mean, how can you, what are the ways in which you have to write OET exams? So you have the paper-based, you have computer-based. Of course, most people tend to go for the paper-based. But then, of course, the computer-based means that from the convenience of, you know, a very unallotted OET center within your country, you can have these exams done via your computer. And of course, the paper-based will be done in a test location. And then for Nigeria, currently, we have um, two major centers. We have a center in Lagos, which has always been there, and then a center in Abuja, which was just recently opened. But for Lagos, Lagos has two centers. You have a center on the island, which is at Lekki, and then a center on the mainland, which is at Ikeja. However, the Abuja center just have one um, exam 
examination center. So, how is this exam being graded? I mean, you have how many grade A up to grade E, right? So, of course, um, for most healthcare professionals, you know, you'd be expected to usually have between the grade A, B, you know, and sometimes C plus. And then for E, usually most people don't have that. That's like the lowest of scores, and I'm sure you know most healthcare professionals will not be in that case. But then I would just like to give you an overview, an oversight of how the scoring system is being done for your E usually from 0 to 90, all right? So the score is over 500. So if you have a score between 0 to 90, you have a grade E. Now, if you score between 100 to 190, you have a grade D, right? 100 to 190, you have a grade D. And then for your C, it will be 200 to 290. So C is 200 to 290. For your C plus, is between 300 to 340. 300 to 340 for your C plus. Then for your B is between 350 to 440. So 350 to 440 gives you a grade B. And then for your grade A is from 450 to 500. So that's how the grading system works for the occupational English test. All right, so I'll be touching on I mean, different parts of the subtest. Remember I said we have four subtests, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. So I'll start with listening, which is the first part of the subtest examination you have on that day. So for your listening, First of all, you have the total number of questions you have for listening is 42 questions, right? So you're going to have 42 questions on the text day. And then the listening is now divided into three parts. You have your listening part A, and then you have listening part B, and then you have listening part C, right? So for your part A, you have 24 questions. And usually the part A is just consultation extract. You hear maybe a doctor talking to a patient or a nurse talking to a patient, just basically consultation. Of course, in part A, there are some parts you need to fill in um you need to fill in the answer so whatever you hear from the audio you need to fill it in those spaces right so that what happens in part a for part b you have six questions right so that six questions you just have um you have um you listen to a short audio extract and then answer each of the questions so you, you hear a short audio you answer the first question you hear another audio you answer the second question and then downwards like that to the sixth um question and then the part C has six, um, 12 questions, right? So remember 24 for your listening part A, six, right? For your listening part B, that makes it 30. And then 12 for your listening part C. And all of this, you know, will be done within 45 minutes. So the test lasts for as long as 45 minutes. Of course, there are different accents, you know, that you might get in the listening. Most like most times British, sometimes might have Irish accents, right? You might have Australian accents, and once in a while maybe American accent. But then of course usually the Australian, British, Irish accent are what is usually used, you know, during your um, listening subtest. Now, what's expected for the cutoff mark for listening? Usually, when you score up to thirty, right, over forty-two, that's thirty over forty-two. Thirty over forty-two is equivalent to three hundred and fifty. I remember from what I said earlier. 350 already qualifies you for a grade B, right? So for most um, healthcare professionals, you need to score a grade B, which is usually 30 over 42, um, for you to excel in the listening. So, all right, so of course, after listening, reading is the next part of your subtest, you know, the exam day. So reading to has 52 questions, all right? And then um, just like the way I said for listening, for you to have a B, which most healthcare professionals require for the exam is for you to score at least a 30 so you score a 30 30 is equal to 350 which gives you a grade b all right so you score a 30 or 42 you have that score now how is it separated reading has part a it has part b it has part c the reading part a has 15 minutes to answer 20 questions so you have 20 questions for to answer 15 minutes and i said reading part a doesn't require any form of comprehension or maybe understanding really all you just need to do is your just to test your accuracy and your speed. How well can you fish out these answers and then answer them? So, of course, it could be like filling a space where you have to look at the text that is given to you on the reading part A and then fill it up. Or probably they've given you a certain text and then they're trying to find these words in those texts, maybe in text A, text B, text C, or text D. So, you're required to just, you know, answer with A or B option, C option, D option, E, depending on how long the text is. Of course, that's actually the low hanging fruit. This is usually the easiest part of the reading. Um, for your part B, you have six questions. So you have short text for each of those six questions. So each of the questions, the six questions in part B has a short text. Those texts are within 100 to 150 words. 
right? So 100 to 150 words, you have those texts, and then you have three options, and you expect it to answer just a single answer. Okay, you choose one that's best. And of course, from your reading part B and part C is comprehension. Your part A, as soon as you're done, they take it, the, the invigilators take it away from you, and then you have the remaining 45 minutes to answer your part B and part C. And because of part B, it's just six questions. Your part C is 16 questions. Of course, it's wide, right? To answer, to give lesser time to your part B and then more time to your part C. We always advise candidates not two minutes per question for your part B. So by the time you multiply two times the six question, you have 12 minutes. And then the remaining um, 33 minutes out of the 45 minutes should be allotted to your part C. So of course, um, part B, six questions, part C. For part C, you have a very long text right and then part C, even as much as 16 questions for your part C, divided into eight and eight so the first text or the first set of text answer the first eight questions and the next set of texts okay you get to answer the remaining eight questions so it is wise for one to just allot about 12 minutes to your part B and then the three minutes to your part C. and of course as i said you need to score at least a 30 to have a b and to have a 350 over 500 for your reading all right, so for your OET writing, you just have just one letter. I mean, just a letter you're going to write. Now, of course, this letter is not going to be writing from your head. And it's not as if you need to think so much about the content because the content has been given to you, which is in form of your case notes. So you see case notes given to you containing the information you just need to write that letter. And of course, the information you need to write a letter is not left for the candidate to transform those information on the case notes into letter writing, right? That's all you just need to do. And of course, um, you have different kind of letter. You have transfer letter, you have discharge letter, you have um, update letters, right? You have referral letters. Referral letters can be cold case referral or urgent referral letters. So that is what you might just um, have. And of course, just a single letter, just one letter and you're done, right? So you just do that letter, right? And then of course, within, expected for you to you have, so you're going to give five minutes for reading, okay, the case notes, and then the remaining 40 minutes for actually writing. So five minutes for reading the case notes to understand and highlight, you know, the important things you need to use for your letter, and then the remaining 40 minutes for you to write. So your total, you have it for five minutes for your writing. All right, so for your speaking, I mean, on that text day, um, You'll be, given, you'll be given what you call a card or a candidate card for your speaking. So it's not as if you're also going to be saying everything off hand too for your speaking. You have a card that contains list of information, the patient bio data, and probably the questions or actually the questions you're going to ask this patient just for you to construct it well and speak correctly. Grammar, intonation, you know, um, how loud you are, how well you can communicate, how well you can eliminate medical jargons, you know, from speaking, how well you can use your empathy cues, like, oh, I'm sorry that this must be difficult for you. I can understand how distressing this can be for you because, of course, you're dealing with human beings. So, of course, your IPS, your interpersonal skill, especially your um, empathy cues, really be at play here. So, the text, what are you going to have? You're going to have two of those speaking tests. So, once you enter the interlocutor or the person that simulates right as the patient would first you know ask you preamble just to test um, the recording and test how loud you can be just to relax you and his tension so with the first two to three minutes you're just asking random questions where did you school from where did you study medicine you know just random questions and they ask you for your identity and stuff like that but for the main exam proper once you're given the card that contains the information for you to communicate with your interlocutor the card is giving you spend three minutes reading that card and then five minutes for the actual speaking test so if you add your five plus three that gives you eight and then you're given another three minutes again to read another card right and then five minutes for the actual speaking test by the time you add your eight minutes here and eight minutes for the first and second you have a combined minutes of 16. but then remember i said that there will be a little preamble right at the beginning about two to three minutes so let's say give or take one should not spend more than 20 minutes for your speaking test and then what is required of you you also require depending okay on those on the on what you're applying for but most you know most often than none is expected for one to have a 350 which is a bad b for your speaking test all right okay so one of the things that people would like to know what is the cost of this occupational english test all right so usually the cost is in usually australian dollars because the exams 
emanated from Australia, right? So for the Australian dollar cost is 587 Australian dollars. Of course, the cost can now vary based on your exchange rate in your country. So whatever the exchange rate is to the Australian dollars is what um, you'll be able to pay. Also, in the US dollar equivalent, it's 455. So for the US dollar equivalent, 455 US dollars, for the Australian is 587 US dollars. So for those in Nigeria, it might be difficult at the moment to pay this money with your current Naira card or your debit card as it were. So you might need to have maybe a domiciliary account or you can have someone pay for you over there. Of course, you can also reach out to Accelerate Academy and they can help you or we can help you enable your payment and make it easy for you as possible. Um, considering that, you know, professional English test is relatively new, you know, compared to most of the other, you know, English proficiency exam. One of the worries that most candidates face is, where can I get material? How do I prepare? But well, things have gotten better, you know, over the past two to three years where you can access a lot of materials. First of all, from the official OET page, which is the official English test page, there are a lot of material resources for all the subtests, for writing, speaking, listening, and reading. So if you open their site, right, you'll be able to access a lot of resources for your practice. Aside that, on the YouTube channels, there are certain channels like the Excelity Academy, right? Our academy provides lots of resources for you to practice with. And of course, there are popular texts, okay, for your reading, popular audios for your listening, popular materials for your writing, popular materials for your speaking that are available everywhere. So the resources are not hard to get, they are not limited, it's something that you can be assessed and you can easily assess when you join the academy or when you're prepared, you know, to write your operational English test exam. All right, so um, I'm sure we've listened to a lot of things about the operational English test and we can see why, you know, it's a test I think, you know, most healthcare professionals should engage. One of the challenges that people might have is, you know, how can they, you know, what's the guarantee that they might pass this exam? It's not really a difficult test, but then of course you might need guidance. Everybody needs guidance, right? So that you can go for the exams and one attempt and pass. And that's why Accelerator Academy is here. We're here to guide you, we're here to train you, we're here to ensure that you pass. Of course, even on this YouTube channel, we have loads of videos that you can subscribe to and watch, listen, learn, and practice. However, we also have an academy where, of course, you can join in. It's a paid academy. You join in and then you'll be taught for a period of weeks and then prepare you extensively, okay, and intensively for your exam, all right? So you can, you know, subscribe on our button, right? And then even on our page, you can get a link which you guys to communicate with the academy if you're interested in joining, you know, Accelerate Academy so that you can excel at your exam at first system. I know there's nothing as beautiful and as sweet as that. So take care and have a wonderful time. Bye.